Oh my God, you guys all look so beautiful. No, there is <laughs> so much to talk about with this film. It is insane. But today I really want to focus on um, your characters and your performances because they are brilliant. And there's so much to deep dive with them. Um, Amanda and Mahala, in the midst of this murder mystery, there's this moment between your characters where we learn that they have a rather complicated history. And with everything that goes on in this film, I think that this moment was just the two of them really seeing each other for what they were, for better or for worse. How do you interpret this moment and this history that they have? <laughs> Uh, is a very kind of classic, convoluted, uh, painful gay romance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that blurred line between friendship uh, and more than that, that can get toxic and confusing, particularly when you are queer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that thing that happens when like it's time to go away to college or someone moves away and you try to stay connected and you both change, like Sophie goes through this huge change she decides to be sober and you know obviously jordan feels a way about that she's resentful and she thinks it's fake and la 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 but she's like obsessed and so in love and all she really wants is sophie but they just keep growing apart you know what i mean i mean it's a, yeah it's pretty quintessential mm -hmm. yeah it's so interesting that this is a thriller and there's murders happening everywhere but at the very root of it it's a story about these people and their um impact on each other's lives and i think that's really amazing now maria during the titular moment of this um mystery the audience is witnessing it through the perspective of your character b making her the only one who isn't an original suspect i thought that was really interesting but that being said her past is so mysterious she seems to tell a lot of lies do you have any idea of what her past looks like what does she look like to you oh my god I, um I'm happy to hear that she's not usually the suspect. <laughs> not right <laughs> because, away, right? <laughs> uh, well, I hope so. Because <laughs> uh, when I was reading the script, I was like, okay, um, she probably is the killer at the beginning. Um, <laughs> because you just don't know anything about her. She can be whoever she want to be. Plus, I don't think she really has social media or anything. Um, so she is so freaking private that if somebody is so private, they definitely have something to hide. Um, maybe she just grew up somewhere in Europe they moved here with her mother. Her mother is struggling with mental illness and she is out there to help her as she should. But that brings her more anxiety and problems with future relationships, as we can see with Sophie. Um, so she probably has been just a dedicated child to her family, because as far as I know her and think of her, she only has her mother and that's her whole world. So she has to take care of her. So that's why she will prioritize her family in front of her personal life, which will create further boundaries for her future friendships, relationships, communication, mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, the final note of this film, um, without giving too much away, the final note of this film happens this next morning um, with Sophie and uh, B. What do you guys think happens throughout the rest of that day? I'm so oh, curious. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> such a nightmare to even conceptualize. Yeah, like, obviously, the cops are going to get involved in some time, right? Like, there's, like, you know I hope I mean? so. Right? Like, I can't. I, okay. Knowing, or, knowing the character internally, I'm like, Sophie has a full mental breakdown. Right. Goes back to rehab. <laughs> Goes back to rehab. Yeah. yeah goes to jail maybe. yeah i think b is gonna go to jail yeah i think b is gonna end up in jail well, or not i mean no because there's well evidence, if they actually so yeah maybe not my, my her hands are over jordan she's basically one who literally who knows we gotta write the second one yeah figure it out can you imagine no Jesus. i get well, stressed no, out thinking maybe. about it his body body part two Oh, I was just you two. I'm just like that, yeah. like where bodies, they would bodies. be at. Bodies, bodies. <laughs> I hope that there's like a bodies like ten year reunion. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That'd be great. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Where, it's, where it's where it's like somehow they've escaped their past. Yeah. And... Right. Well, do we even show? Are they actually dead? I mean, who Ooh, knows? mystery. <laughs> Oh my god, this movie is so amazing. The guy next to me was taking notes and I was so confused. I was like, what are we even, what can you possibly be taking notes on? Um, <laughs> um, it's, it was so amazing. Congratulations, guys. I'm so excited for everyone to see this. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. So much for joining me today. Hey, guys, how are you? Very good. How are you? Good. This has to be one of the wildest movies I've ever seen. And I honestly think that something that makes it so insane is how real your performances are and how you genuinely feel like you're in the house with these guys. And Chase, a line that really stuck out to me was um, said to your character by her boyfriend when she when he said she doesn't have a thought in her head that hasn't been thought by someone else. And in that moment, looking at your face, we see her start to sort of break down and 
realize that this person who she's been dating for all these years thinks of her that way. Um, what did you interpret that exchange and their relationship in general? Yeah, I think, I mean, that power dynamic is something that Helena, we, we, we teased out between me, Pete and Helena, like so specifically. And I think, I mean, he's publicly humiliating her in front of all her best friends. And I think there is like a desire for his ego to, you know, be gain some power there. And I think like it, Helena talked a lot about this character, Ophelia, this like very tragic character who's kind of a martyr and like silently suffering in this relationship. But yeah, there's some definitely like messed up, like sadomasochistic things like happening within that relationship. And um, yeah, I mean, that was very pain. That was a very painful scene, but like the dynamics of it were so fun to tease out and, and, and um, yeah, explore. Now, Rachel, I know a few people who I saw, Allison. I think a lot of people can find glimpses of people they know or even themselves in her. She seems to try and see the good in everyone around her, but that ends up being a cautionary tale. Um, how do you interpret her as a character? What do you think about her? What do you think her past looks like? I think um, I, I relate to Alice a lot in that I think she does try to see the good in people. I think we have similar insecurities and anxieties. Um, I think she fears everyone not liking her or maybe like not taking her seriously. Um, and that all comes true, um, which is hard. So I think like she probably had a past of, I don't want to be like being bullied, but like not either feeling confident in herself or feeling not taken seriously or made fun of. And I think that's where a lot of her um, kind of insecurities and um, strengths and flaws come from. Absolutely. Now, Lee, your character, Greg, he falls victim to a classic case of misinterpretation. But after all said and done, we still know about as much about him as the other people in the house do, which I think is a really cool tactic. Um, what, what do you think he was like before he got to the mansion? Who do you think this man is? You know, you, you, you watch Greg in the movie and you think maybe he's a pretty simple guy, that he's just, a, you know, looking for fun. But he's actually a very deep, very complex human being, as we all are. Um, and he's experiencing love, which is, you know, something we all like to do from time to time. Um, so, um, so I would say, even though, you know, Greg's appearance in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is pretty brief and, and um, reaches a sad conclusion, uh, generally, um, he's, uh, I think there's a lot more there. I think that the, he's a very, you know, he's a real poem of a person. And, um, and, you know, I'll just have to work on that on my own, I guess, because I don't know if we're doing a sequel. There's the prequel. No the prequel. We're doing the prequel, yeah. the prequel of um, our, our, the week before the week. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give the people Oster. what they want. <laughs> Starting with the downloading of Tinder. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how it starts. And then kind of the date and then, yeah. Yeah. It's a short yeah. film. Um, <laughs> But, you know, incredibly exciting. Yes. Short and dense. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I loved playing Greg. I thought he was a lot of fun. I think I loved his kind of love of life and him being um, with this, you know, completely different group than he, you know, of people that he doesn't have much in common with. But that's kind of fun. You know, that's a that's a fun situation to be in.